स्टूडियो जिबली और घेबली और हाउ एवर यू वन से दे ने सोल्ड डिजिटल वर्जन ऑफ द मूवीज अंटिल रिसेंटली so the shift to streaming will surely mean more people checking them out than ever before to first time as though it might not be immediately obvious where to start these movies are diverse in tone and style with little to no connection between them the overall quality is very high but there are definitely some odd ball movies that wouldn't be the best place to jump in so i thought i'd put together a guide that would hopefully help you people getting into jibli for the first time and let me make it clear that i am not ranking these movies from best to worst or something like that i am just suggesting the movies you should begin with this is about easing you into the studio's work and making sure you don't write it all off after accidentally watching tales from earth sea before any other movie now before i start there might be some of you who are wondering what the heck is this studio ghibli anyway It is a Japanese animation studio founded by the director Hayao Miyazaki, producer Toshio Suzuki, and the late director Isao Takahata in 1985. Since then, the studio has produced 22 feature-length movies, the majority of which have been met with widespread acclaim. I would suggest you to watch these movies in Japanese if you don't mind the subtitles. Most of the English dubs are decent, but they are a little inconsistent. It's also worth mentioning that a few of the movies have slightly different soundtracks depending on their language. Now that's all for the introduction. Let's get to the main content. I've divided the movies into four classes. Beginning with class 1, I call these movies the essentials. Your quest for exploring Studio Ghibli should start with these movies. Number 1, Castle in the Sky. This film perhaps lacks some of the qualities of Ghibli's later works but it holds up incredibly well as a spirited fantasy adventure. It's fun to watch what is technically the first Studio Ghibli title. The story is simple enough. A boy and a girl try to find a magic crystal and a castle in the sky. But it's merely the skeleton for the visual compositions that would be stunning even if they were released today. Some of the most iconic Ghibli imagery comes from this movie. Castle in the Sky is wildly entertaining and set a high bar for what was to follow. My next suggestion is Miyazaki's Spirited Away. It is Studio Ghibli's most successful movie. I recommend watching it early on because it will show you a lot about the range of studio's work. It presents a willful yet vulnerable female protagonist. No animation studio comes close in the department of empowering stories for young women. This movie contains artistry on a visual level that rivals any animated film. You can take frames from Spirited Away and hang them on your wall, quite literally. I would now like to bring you back down to earth with Isao Takahata's Only Yesterday. A truly wonderful movie without any fantastical elements whatsoever. It's the best example of Ghibli's ability to wrangle deep emotions out of the mundane things. It's a simple tale. A woman living in Tokyo goes to visit the countryside and remembers her childhood on the train journey. In the end, the film serves as a reminder of how we are formed by the events of our life and how our past sometimes feels like it wasn't that long ago. While this is one of Studio Ghibli's lesser-known works, Having only received an English release 4 years ago, it should be high on your list. Okay, so now moving on to my favorite Miyazaki movie, Kiki's Delivery Service. It's such a simple yet so relentlessly heartwarming movie. Kiki the headstrong but vulnerable witch making her way in a new town is perhaps the best of studio's many excellent characters. Kiki's Delivery Service is a movie that takes its time delivering its upbeat message and emotional punches with a perfect pacing, all set to a gorgeous music score. I only wish I had seen it when I was a kid. Number five on the list is Whisper of the Heart. The fans of this movie are probably singing country roads about now. This classic tune plays a major role in the 1995 coming of age tale. That was actually the first Ghibli production not directed by Miyazaki or Takahata. Yoshifumi Kondo took duties for what would be his only film before his tragic death in 
He effortlessly blends realism and fantasy to create one of the studio's most romantic and magical stories. It's no wonder that he was the first person Miyazaki or Takahata entrusted to direct a movie besides themselves. So don't miss out on this one. It's right up there with the best. The last Ghibli movie to earn my essential designation is Miyazaki's My Neighbor Totoro. Perhaps the studio's best known movie or at least the one that's produced the most merchandise. Totoro is of course an instantly iconic character that you no doubt recognize. Almost nothing happens in the movie beyond cute kids in rural Japan meet Totoro. It's a loving funny depiction of childhood. The gateway drug for an addiction to Studio Ghibli. This is quite simply one of the most delightful and enjoyable children's movie ever made. My Neighbor Totoro is the sort of movie that you could watch every few years and still get something different out of it. Now moving on to class 2. If you have finished watching the aforementioned movies and have developed a liking towards the studio's works then these are the next set of movies you should watch i call these the next steps number 1 on this list is porco rosso one of the few movies produced by the studio that could legitimately be called an action adventure movie porco rosso might be a tougher sell visually than most of the other ghibli films given that its protagonist is an obese pig in world war 1 flight gear Porco Rosso reveals itself to be one of Miyazaki's most entertaining movies. The next on the list is Tale of Princess Kaguya. This movie doesn't look like any other Ghibli movie at all. Based on a Japanese folk tale, the art style in this movie is composed of faded watercolors and harsh charcoal strokes. The message conveyed through this movie is that we are only here for a short time and we all should feel the joy of living in this place. Number 3 on this list is Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Technically this is the movie that led to the founding of the studio. So some of you may argue that it doesn't count, but it tends to get included in the Ghibli collection. So I'm listing it here. Also, it's awesome. It's an old fashioned adventure tale and it set the foundation for the masterpieces to come. So now moving on to the next one. The Secret World of Ariete. It actually flew under the radar a little but it's still awesome. The concept of rendering everyday objects at the oversized scale is perfect for Ghibli's obsessive attention to detail. And Ariete herself is a great protagonist. This is a kind of a low key movie in its scope but I still love it. Number 5, Princess Mononoke. This was one of the major international breakthroughs for the studio. This movie it is Miyazaki in a deeply philosophical mode but it doesn't quite get there for me suffering from a bloated runtime and a plot that loses sight of its intimate details that make Ghibli's work so impactful it's a visually amazing movie that shows Miyazaki accelerating his powers ahead of spirited away the last movie in this category is howl's moving castle This film is all over the place plot wise but it's never less than wonderful to look at and theme wise anti war messages the joy of flying a suspicion of technology it's all there and the moving castle itself is one of ghibli's most vividly recognized creations now most of you would be satisfied after watching these 12 movies but definitely there would be people like me who tend to go the extra mile just to make sure that we have experienced things in its entirety if your thirst for studio ghibli has been quenched even after watching the above mentioned movies then you should definitely check out the rest of the movies as well although they lack the essence of a studio ghibli classic yet they are undoubtedly charming and well executed and i guarantee that you won't regret watching them i'll just be reading the names of these movies the six movies which i have included in class 3 are The Wind Rises, Pompoko, My Neighbors the Yamadas, When Mani Was There, From Up on Poppy Hill and Ponyo. That's all for class 3. Now moving on to the final category, class 4. This is the last set of movies and I have 3 for you. Tales from Earth Sea, The Cat Returns and Ocean Waves. I strongly suggest you to watch these movies only if you have watched the above mentioned movies and you have nothing else to do. 
I wouldn't call them disastrously bad, but they are certainly slow moving and unexciting, without the quality of being logical and consistent in the storytelling section. If you are any familiar with Studio Ghibli, then by now you are probably wondering why I haven't mentioned Grave of the Fireflies. This World War II era tale of two children struggling to survive in the aftermath of a fire bombing is utterly crushing, and one of Ghibli's most powerful and accomplished movies. Everyone should watch it once, if maybe only once. This movie would have been right there in my essentials category, only if it was as easily accessible as the others. This movie isn't available digitally, and you might have to dig a little deep if you want to get your hands on this one. So there you have it. I really hope you find this useful and find some movies that you would love as much as I do. Thanks for sticking around till now. And as always, if you're listening to this on a platform like Apple Podcast, iTunes, or even Google Podcast, and you have like twenty seconds to spare, then I'd be really happy if you could leave a small review. Thank you for tuning in to the Anime Nichan podcast. That's all I have for you today. I'll see you guys next time.